Welcome to this video. I do have a video on this channel where I show how to use RxJS in a Vue.js project. And as you learned there, you don't need anything else than these two things, Vue and RxJS. However, there is a special package created by the Vue.js creators, which makes implementing RxJS or this React functionality into a Vue app even easier. I'm talking about ViewRx and I'm on the official GitHub page here. A link can be found in the video description. Now, this isn't required as you saw in the other video, but it can make it a bit easier to work with observables, a bit more convenient. Actually, the documentation on this GitHub page is pretty good as is the case for most Vue.js docs, but I will still walk you through the basics. Fall back to this page if you want to learn more about it though. So first of all, we should install ViewRx. So back in my project, and I'm in the project which I created in the mentioned last video, you can also find a link to that in the video description. So in this project, I will run npm install view rx, and I'll add dash dash save to store an entry in the package.json file. Now, as you know, this will now install the package and we're ready to use it. The first thing we need to do is we need to make view aware of this new package. So in the main.js file, I'll import ViewRx from ViewRx. Now, I not only need that, I also need to tell ViewRx what it should work with. An observable, a subject, a couple of things. And you can again consult the official docs for more info on that. I will use an observable. So I need to import observable from RxJS observable. And only import what you're planning to add to the space package. So here, I can now use view and the use method to add this plugin. And I will use viewRx and I'll pass a second argument here. That'll be an object configuring this plugin. And here I simply pass observable. Now, of course, this is a JavaScript object, so we should have key value pairs. I'm using the ES6 syntax where this will automatically be expanded to observable, observable like this. I'm just taking the short route here. So with that, we do have ViewRx configured and being aware of that observable object. So now ViewRx can handle things like subscriptions because that's part of that observable object. I now want to use it and we can use it in our component just like the data method. It's actually pretty close. We add a new property to that root object. It's called subscription, uh, subscriptions, excuse me, and it's called as a method, just like data is, to make sure that each component has its own object. Therefore, subscriptions returns an object, just like data again. We can actually get rid of data now, and instead in subscriptions, add this count property, which we're outputting in the template. And this time, however, we're not assigning a value like zero, we're assigning an observable. So I can simply copy that code, observable interval and add it here as a value for count. Please note that I'm not subscribing to it. That is done by ViewRx. That is the reason why we made it aware of how observables work by passing it here so that it knows how to subscribe and it will subscribe automatically. So right now count would output this incrementing number and I can prove this by commenting out everything in the created method and running our development server with npm run dev. Make sure that you still have that observable import here though, because even though you did add it in main.js, that is only for the ViewRx plugin to be aware of it. We are using it here too, here. So if we use a certain object, we need to have it available in that file where we use it. So we need to import it here, otherwise JavaScript won't find it. So with that and the development server started, let's go back to our ViewRx application and there you will see that indeed we have our incrementing number. And the nice thing is, we're using this like data, we simply set up our property, we're outputting this property in the template, and we simply assigned a reactive value, an observable, instead of a hard-coded or a synchronous value like a number. That is pretty cool. Of course, we're not limited to that. We can still use our filter here. So I can simply copy that filter and chain it, also chain it in a new line, of course. Make sure that you also import filter as you do with interval because we're still using it in that file. That's important. And with that, I can also get rid of created because I'm not using it anymore. 
And now if I hit save and go back to my application, reload it, you see we start at zero, then we see two, and then we will see four and six, only the even numbers. So the same functionality as in my other video, but now achieved with the ViewRx package, which automatically subscribes. Now, the ViewRx package offers a bit more features than just that, though that is one of the most important features. If you want to see more, let me know. I hope this was helpful. And if you want to dive deeper right now, have a look at the official docs for that ViewRx package, also linked in the video description, which are pretty great on the GitHub page, these docs, I mean. So have a great day. Bye.